All right. I, you know, I could go on about how irritated I am with politics, but I'm not. I'm just going to say this. Everyone's way too worried about rhetoric. And to- totally worried about rhetoric. I know this. It's, 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 this is, says this is a podcast about uh, the, the flat earth theory. And I'm going to get that to that in a minute, but this is my regular podcast. So you got to let me have a chance to vent here. Everyone's all excited about what Trump says, whatever it is. They get excited. They're happy. They're hateful. My goodness. Don't worry. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. You know, they say that. No, 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 no. It's not what you say. It's not how you say it. It's what you do. And it's why you say what you say and do what you do. It's why you say it. And it's what you do. All right. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to get into this, this flat earth thing here. Now, here we've got, you know, we talked last time about what we talked about last time. And I'm going to talk about clouds. First, we're, before we get to look at the cloud video I made, perspective okay perspective this is a road okay here's my really badly drawn road and you've got the you know the dot you know road okay typically you know you've got an object i'm just going to draw a simple box and as it gets farther away the object gets smaller and smaller that's like that's what they teach you in art class and that's what everyone sees in all of life and and so that's you know and then eventually you just can't really see it well what what these what these flat earth guys are saying is i I don't know i don't know where they get this idea from i I don't know let's say we've got an object so that you can see what it is let's say it looks kind of like a pawn and it's like that and up close it looks like that well they're claiming they say as objects disappear in the distance the bottom disappears first. I thought that the top and the bottom of an object got slowly smaller. This is this this what I'm drawing is is what I see happening with mine eyes every day. Okay? It gets in the distance and and there it is. In the distance and 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 it it slowly gets smaller. But what they're saying what they're saying is that as objects disappear, it's, it's like you've got, okay, you've got this, and that, that the bottom magically disappears before everything else. Now, now, if one of those idiots running their YouTube channel hears this, yeah, you stupid idiot, you didn't hear what we said, you were saying about it, and they'll add, because they're always condescending, and they really... I'm not joking. They say that objects don't just get smaller top to bottom as they go off in the distance. They say that the bottom half, the bottom part of an object magically disappears while the rest gets smaller when things go off in the distance. That's cockamamie nonsense. Let's draw a tree uh, to see, to illustrate my point. So here's the roots of the tree and there's the trunk of the tree and there's the leaves. Normally, normally, when the tree gets off in the distance, there's the tree, it's really small, and there's its leaves. That's what you'd think, right? Okay, they're saying that as the tree goes away, that the bottom part of the tree is going to disappear. It's all smaller, but the bottom part disappears. That's what they say. And they say that that's why, you know, when there's, there's like a, a, a boat sailing away you know here's the boat and there's its little flag and it's it's sailing away on the water when it goes away all of a sudden as it slowly disappears in the distance if you look through it through a telescope the bottom part of boats tend to disappear first over the horizon now i talked about how the numbers don't always add up but they're saying that that proves there's no horizon because objects disappear bottom first. It's the weirdest nonsense I've ever seen. All right, exhibit A. Now on to exhibit B. We'll look here at a simple video I made. It's a minute, 40 some seconds, 41. It's a minute and a half, basically. I got in a car and drove down the road. Uh, This is not too far. Watch the video here. It's going to play a few times. Not too far from Sawyer, Michigan. You know that the flat earthers talk about there's the sand dunes. It's in Michigan. Yeah, Michigan has a lot of those. And if you go to the sand dune, you can see Chicago from the other side. You're not supposed to. And that's the end. No more science. That proves the earth is flat, you know. And I've seen Chicago years ago. 
Before anyone ever talked about this, I was in college. I mean, that, that was, you know, eons ago. Now, just after our pet dinosaur got hit by a car, I think. I mean, it was in the dinosaur. But I remember seeing long, a long time, the, 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 she, looking at Chicago from the opposite. I talked about that in the other video. Okay. Well, this isn't very far in Michigan from Sawyer exit 12. You, you get off I-94, Sawyer exit 12, drive towards the lake. If you don't know how to drive towards the lake, don't go to Michigan. But here we are, not far from that, drive down the road, and there we are, off in the distance, we can see, just look at the video, sun, sunlight's coming down through the cloud in the sky. Uh, this is a Michigan freeway driving approximately 70 miles an hour. Well, okay, I don't want to say how fast I was driving, but let's just say that a minute and a half is about a mile, okay, probably a little bit more. So you see the thing off in the distance, you can see the bottom of the light rays, you can see the clouds where it's coming out of, and after a minute and a half, we're right under, we can look up and see through the camera, underneath the clouds coming down, the, the light is. Now that's a, that's, a, that's a little over a mile, a mile and a half. That means that those light rays are a mile, mile and a half long. So, now, you're far away, it looks like a triangle. And the flat earthers say that, and I'm talking about the YouTubers. I'm not talking about flat earth guys that really want to ask questions. I'm I'm talking about these guys with these YouTube channels with all these followers who make all these long, boring, condescending, rude, disrespectful, just stupid idiots, and their ball theory. It's how they talk because they're populists. They, I'm talking about those guys. They say that because it looks like a triangle coming out of the clouds, that proves that the sun is only 60, 50 some miles above the earth. That's what they're claiming. Well, got, get in a car, drive down the road, and you find out the truth. It's not a triangle. It's just perspective. When you see the light coming down out of the clouds, thou, those light rays from, from the clouds to the ground are about a mile long, give or take. Maybe two, maybe one, maybe half, depending on the time and the angle and all that stuff. But we're talking about a mile long, you know, group of light rays coming through the clouds. You're a mile away from the light rays are hitting on the ground where you are. And it's coming out of the clouds a mile away. That's why it looks skinnier at the top and smaller at the top and wider at the bottom. All you got to do is get in your car and go drive, go drive up next to the thing. Look at the light rays up there and you see that it's when you get under it and you get next to it, you see that it's a straight ray of light coming out of the sun, out of those clouds. It's straight. You can see how skinny it is coming through the clouds. And when it comes through the clouds, it does not come out as a triangle when you're up underneath those clouds, the hole in the clouds with the sun coming through. This is so easy to see. It's so just get in your car and go. And, and nobody does it. People are running around spreading these theories based on the light triangle, triangle light cloud thing. That's reason. Get you, the sun's, you, just accept it. It's how they address these things. Get in your car and go look. There's not much to talk about with it. So I, I look at this and I say, you know, what? Why? Why are, I mean, it's simple, it's simple research. Go look at it. Go, go do some basic fact checking, man. Don't believe everything you're told. Just go look with your eyes. You know, what? why would they do this anyway? I mean, it almost seems like these are a bunch of like college frat boys. And in order to get like initiated into the fraternity, like they've got to like go make some video that fools all of campus. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to get to the point. Opponents are as easy to find as opinions. Neither are worthy commodities since they come in overabundance. No matter who you are or what you do, however good or bad, someone will always tell you you're right and someone will always tell you you're wrong. Knowing which voices to heed and which to ignore comes from proof. Hearken to people who have done and proven that their ideas actually work. But that proof of competence test should come earlier. First, choose your destination wisely. Then heed the voices who want you to get there. They are your true constituency. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.